What's up fellas? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we have another episode of Ask the Expert. Today's episode is all about nutrition and we're talking to Maddie Alm. She's actually already been on my podcast before, so I'll link that episode in the description, but this is like a short form, refreshed version of that where you guys ask questions on my Instagram for her and we give you the answers in this video format YouTube video. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let me know in the comments if you're liking the series and what other kind of episodes you guys want to see. Also big shout out to today's sponsor, which is also a podcast sponsor, which is Inside Tracker. I'm sure you guys have, if you follow me on anything, you've already heard me talk about Inside Tracker, but I've been using Inside Tracker for the past couple months. Inside Tracker has really helped me discover things about my body that I did not know before. If you're someone that's super data oriented, Inside Tracker is definitely for you. It analyzes your body's data and then gives you a science-backed trackable action plan for you to focus on for the next couple months. For me, some things I learned about myself the last couple months, especially back in February when I first got my blood work done, was that my cortisol was absolutely so high and I literally had no idea. Cortisol is a stress hormone, but over the past couple months, just by working on lifestyle changes like meditation and working on my sleep and incorporating more foods like healthy fats and omega-3s and all that, just the combination of everything using that trackable action plan, I've been able to lower my cortisol. Thank goodness I just got retested about a month ago and I was so excited to see that all of my hard work has been put to good use and now my cortisol levels are still a little high but they're now in the normal range which is great but also something that I've been working on is my vitamin D levels which are still low which is kind of crazy because I moved to New York City from Portland during the winter my vitamin D levels were low and then I got retested a month ago and they're still low so I have been making sure to get on my supplement game taking that vitamin D every day if you guys are interested in checking out inside tracker there's a link in my description right now just go to insidetracker.com slash Emma and you guys can get 25% off. So highly recommend if you're someone that's data oriented and you want to feel your best and perform your best, the Inside Tracker is definitely the way to go to help you give you that individualized plan and be able to get a look inside your body that you would never have before. So go check that out and let's get into today's episode. All right. Do you want to just start off by giving a little intro of uh, who you are and what your qualifications are? Yeah. Uh, my name is Maddie Alm. I'm a professional runner and registered dietitian in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. I like, guess those are my credentials. <laughs> yeah. Very good runner and also very great dietitian. It seems you work with a lot of pro runners. I'm mm -hmm. assuming. Yeah. I work with runners actually like all levels, people training for their first marathon to pro athletes. Um, and I have a lot of like high schoolers and college athletes and uh, yeah, I get a pretty good mix, but I would say most of my athletes are runners or just endurance athletes in general. Yeah. So you're on team boss. Do you work with team boss members? I work with some of them. Yeah. I mean, I will say my team is pretty good with their nutrition overall. I definitely don't need to do a lot of work with them because <laughs> they're all pretty on top of it. Um, you know, like occasionally we'll have someone whose blood work comes back as normal or just tracking body composition throughout the season to make sure no one's getting too lean too early. Um, but really my job with them is very easy and I'm just kind of there as a sounding board or for random pieces of advice when they need me. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Well, we got a lot of questions for you all about nutrition. So I'm excited to go through them awesome. and you can, you can give us all the answers because you're the expert and I am not. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Great. First question. What can runners do to stop overcomplicating nutrition? Oh, good question. Um, I would say the, the best thing you can do is just eat when you're hungry and eat what sounds good. Uh, I think a lot of people underestimate listening to your body. So, you know, first and foremost, your body is the, the main thing that's going to know what you need. And so if it's telling you that you're hungry, that's probably happening for a reason. Um, or if you're craving something like sugar, that probably means you're not getting enough carbs. So, you know, just listening to the things your body's telling you and not, you know, trying to say, oh, but I, I ate two hours ago or, oh, you know, I'm going to have dinner soon. So I should probably just wait, um, you know, things like that. Just listening to your body is the easiest way um, to make sure you're feeling well. How many calories should you eat in the day? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my answer to that is just going to be, it depends. There are so many different factors that go into how many calories you need. Um, it can be your gender, your age, your height, your weight, your activity level, what types of activity you're doing day to day. Um, you know, so there's so many different factors that there's really no one magic number, um, for any runner. So I actually don't recommend tracking calories and it's not something that I use with any of my, um, clients because, 
again, it's just going to vary from day to day. And I think it's better to learn how to listen to your body and not rely on numbers to tell you if you're feeling well. Is there any circumstance where you would ever recommend someone track calories? On their own? Typically, no. Um, something that I will do with an athlete, if I'm concerned that they're under fueling, I'll have them like do a food log for me. And then I'll go through and calculate things and compare that to what I've calculated for their energy needs. Um, you know, there's a lot of apps out there that will calculate it for you, but a lot of those are pretty inaccurate and there are a lot of like one size fits all kind of approach. Um, so usually I would say no, um, you know, if you are interested in figuring out if you're getting enough calories, I would recommend working with a dietitian to help figure out what your personal range should be and then how you can approach that on a daily basis instead of trying to do things on your own based on something an app is telling you. What is the importance of fueling properly? Where do I start? Um, <laughs> I think the biggest one is just, you know, your overall health and well-being. performance kind of second to that, you know, if you're healthy, you'll perform well. Um, but, you know, bottom line, I see a lot of runners sacrificing their health for, you know, inadequate fueling to try to achieve a lower weight or a different body composition. And, you know, as I've said many times, that's not going to help you achieve that goal. If it does, it's usually temporary. And often we end up seeing that athlete kind of go into an injury cycle and we may never see them really perform well again, which is a really harsh reality. Um, but I think the importance of fueling well is just for longevity in the sport to stay healthy, not to burn out um, and just to be able to keep doing what you love for a long time. How soon before and after a run should I eat? <laughs> so I would say you definitely want to eat before and after a run. That's the first thing. A lot of athletes are hesitant to eat before a run, especially if they never have before. Um, you can get through a run without eating. You know, people are like, oh, but I, I'm fine. I got through my run. Well, you did. But there's a lot of things going on that can actually impact your recovery, you know, your risk for injury over the course of a season from not eating before runs. So just because you can doesn't mean you should. Um, that being said, I typically recommend doing something that's high in carbs and low in fat and fiber somewhere between one to two hours before your run. Um, something like toast with peanut butter and honey, toaster waffles with maple syrup, you know, oatmeal with banana slices, that kind of thing. Um, if you have a super early practice and you're like me and you can't get up, <laughs> then you might need to do something lighter like honey singer waffle or fruit snacks. Um, like applesauce or even orange juice is great too. So starting small, if you're not used to it, working your way up, um, that's a good way to kind of train your body to get used to running with something in the tank. And then post-workout, ideally you're getting something within an hour. Um, it doesn't have to be like an immediate 10 minutes right after you finish running, um, but just trying to get something within an hour, whether that's a meal or something else that has, has carbs and protein, like chocolate milk or a smoothie or a bar or something like that. What happens when you don't eat after a workout? Well, usually what I see is that athletes are low in their calories and protein and everything for the day if they miss that post-workout fueling window. Um, and it also really impacts their ability to recover. And especially if you're an athlete who goes from like a workout to a lifting session, you're not going to be able to gain as much from that lifting session if you're not having something in between. So um, I would just say overall, I see less improvements in performance and I see athletes more at risk for low energy availability throughout the season. What do you think are good foods to eat for sensitive stomachs or for someone that maybe isn't hungry after a workout and they feel sick? Yeah. So sensitive stomachs, that is a, an interesting topic because I've mentioned this before somewhere, but um, under fueling can actually increase your risk for stomach issues. So a lot of times runners think they have a sensitive stomach but really they're just not getting enough to eat throughout the day. So making sure you're eating enough is actually probably first and foremost, the thing I would recommend if you struggle from stomach issues. Um, the second thing is again, you know, starting small, starting with something really light, um, low in fiber is really the key there for a lot of people. So like, for example, I see runners struggle with apples before runs, but they do okay with bananas. So there's a difference in the types of fiber that are in those foods. So um, it's going to vary from person to person, but not giving up just because you experience stomach issues, you know, being willing to try different foods and different options um, just to see what works best for you. Um, and then I would say post-workout, if you're struggling to get something to eat, it's pretty common not to have an appetite after a run. 
a lot of times this is just from intense exercise or your core temperature going up. So turning to liquid calories, especially cold liquid calories, like smoothies or protein shakes or, you know, chocolate milks can really help bring that core temperature down, get you some calories and usually helps bring your hunger back in about an hour or so. Uh, should it, you carbo load before like a race or a big workout? I would say it's more important to consistently get carbs throughout the week than it is just the day before a race or a hard workout. Um, you know, carbohydrate availability, which is your access to those energy stores needs to be consistent for you to get the most from your training. Um, there are like really sciencey ways to practice like, you know, training with lower carbs and then increasing your carb intake. Um, but a lot of that is for like, you know, ultra marathon runners, that kind of thing. If you're a college athlete or a high school athlete, you're running a 5k, probably not super necessary. Um, but you know, just making sure that you're getting carbs throughout the week and then maybe an extra serving of carbs, um, you know, at dinner the night before the race and then like a high carb bedtime snack, like oatmeal or something. Um, and then your typical pre-run fuel before your race. What are some signs of underfueling? This is a great opportunity to talk about red S relative energy deficiency in sport. Um, this is what happens when your energy intake is not matching the energy you're using to train. And there's actually a really wide variety of symptoms. Um, the most common one that I see in athletes is irritability. So if you notice that your mood is changing, you're snapping at somebody who you've never snapped at before, um, you know, that's kind of something to pay attention to. Um, another one would be poor sleep quality. I see a lot of athletes start to struggle with sleep when they're under fueling, um, you know, chronic fatigue, difficulty changing body composition, um, increased risk for stomach issues is another one. Um, I already touched on kind of like the psychological side of things. Um, and then for women losing their period is a big sign as well. How does under fueling affect performance? So all of those things obviously can impact performance. Um, you're going to increase your risk for injury and you're going to actually see a decrease in your aerobic capacity, your endurance. So obviously as runners, those are two big things that we rely on. Um, you're more likely to see muscle breakdown. So you'll actually see kind of a decrease in strength and an inability to maintain that strength throughout the, the race or the training, um, the workout that you're trying to do. Um, and then, you know, you're at an increased risk for things that are going to take you out of training. Like, like I said, injuries and then illness is another one. So consistency with training is really big for performance. And if you're under fueling, you're less likely to be able to be consistent with your training. And that's going to really impact you over the course of the season. What are some good foods for injury recovery? So if you're injured, again, <laughs> this is the theme of the whole thing. Number one thing is make sure you're eating enough. I see athletes really struggle with that when they're injured. They try to just switch to like salads because they're like, oh, you know, I'm not running. I need to make sure I'm not gaining weight. Um, first of all, you know, it's normal to gain weight when you're not training during an injury. And a lot of times that actually needs to happen. And that could be why you were injured in the first place. So, you know, number one thing, getting adequate calories will help support healing. Um, same thing with protein. You know, you're trying to heal tissue and protein is the building block for almost all of our tissues. So getting enough protein is really important for injury recovery. Um, then the last thing is just anti-inflammatory nutrients. So things like fruits and vegetables and omega-3s and fish and nuts and seeds, those kinds of things. So overall, just a balanced diet, um, you know, not cutting anything out, not restricting, but just making sure that you're focusing on fueling, even though you're injured and not training. What are some good foods that you recommend to help someone either like balance their hormones or regain their period? Yeah. So there's a few things that you can try if you haven't, I would say number one thing, you should definitely see a medical professional and make sure that there's nothing like no medical condition that's causing you to have lost your period in the first place, you know, get blood work done, that kind of thing. Um, if there's nothing going on, you know, the second approach would be, I would always recommend talking to your coach and letting them know that this is an issue. If you don't feel comfortable talking to your coach, find an athletic trainer or, you know, an assistant coach or somebody else you can feel comfortable confiding in because sometimes there's a mixture between maybe you need to back off of training a little bit or have, you know, one rest day or one cross training day um, to help with that recovery. 
And then from a food standpoint, usually what we try to do is increase dietary fats. So doing things like whole fat dairy, adding more avocado, more nut butter, nuts and seeds, those kinds of things. Um, increasing uh, carbohydrate intake is actually a really big one for maintaining your period or getting it back. Um, an interesting study recently just showed that for women who ate the same amount of calories over a 24 hour period, those who had longer times between meals, so they spent a longer time in like an energy deficit, were more likely to have lost their period. So it's not just about getting enough calories, it's making sure you're getting enough throughout the day, not skipping meals, not skipping snacks, you know, not going six plus hours without eating something and then having a huge meal. You can't really make up for that time you missed. So, um, you know, having things consistently throughout the day, and then I would say the last one that I see with runners, especially is eating too much fiber. Um, fiber can actually bind to circulating estrogen and remove it from your system, which makes it harder to restore your hormones. And it also fills you up. So you're less likely to get those calories that you need. Um, so, you know, you don't have to cut out things like fruits and vegetables, but keep those serving sizes to a minimum, make sure the rest of your plate is those carbs and protein that you need along with those healthy fats. Are there any supplements that you recommend people take? So I'm a dietitian. So my big thing is food. I want people to try to get anything they can from their food first. Your body knows what to do with it a lot better. You're not going to overdo it on any nutrients just from food. And there's a lot of things in the foods that help you absorb nutrients. Like for example, with dairy, the lactose helps you absorb calcium. So sometimes you get better um, nutrient absorption from the foods. If you are, you know, a vegan athlete or a vegetarian athlete, you're lactose intolerant, or there are certain foods you can't eat, that's when I would say you would need to consider supplements. But um, usually that's on a case by case basis. Um, same with iron, you know, always getting your blood work done before you take iron. I've said this before, but iron overload and iron deficiency have really similar symptoms. So not just taking iron because you feel tired, you know, trying to figure out what's actually going on. Um, the only supplement that I really encourage athletes to take is vitamin D just because it is hard to get enough of that from food. And there's a really high rate of deficiency among athletes. So especially in the winter, or if you live somewhere where it's dark and cloudy all the time, um, adding vitamin D can help with the bone health as well. Okay. Well, the last question I have is, do you have any other advice or like words of wisdom for runners looking to you know, learn more about nutrition or focus more on nutrition? Yeah, I would say um, just focus on doing what's best for you. I think a lot of issues with fueling and runners comes from comparison, whether that's to teammates or other pro runners. Um, you have no idea if what somebody's doing is actually right for them. They could be on the verge of an injury. They could be struggling with an eating disorder. You don't really know. And so just blindly copying somebody who's running well right now doesn't necessarily mean that's going to translate for you. So I think <clears throat> like the most important thing that I would encourage, especially for young female athletes, um, you know, taking care of your body because it's the only body you have is going to get you a lot farther than trying to cut corners for performance when you're young. Um, and I know a lot of athletes who did struggle with that when they were younger really regret those choices and wish that they had known better for their long-term health. So, um, you know, it's never too early to care about fueling. Um, if you have questions, you know, looking for a registered dietitian who's going to be, you know, the most credible source for nutrition information, don't get your nutrition information from a random person on TikTok. It's probably not going to work out for you. Um, but, you know, just making sure you're getting it from credible sources, credible people, and just finding an approach that's the best fit for you as an athlete. Well, where can people find you or follow you or what resources do you have available? Yeah, so I can work with athletes one-on-one, -on -one, depending on what state you're in. Um, you can go to my website, fuelingforward.com to inquire about a session if you're interested. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram at fueling underscore forward for nutrition tips. And if you're interested in my running journey and life, I'm at madsalm12 on Instagram. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for answering all of our questions. I hope some people got something out of this good old me conversation. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's been great.
Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode of Ask the Expert. I hope you learned something from Maddie. Make sure to go give her a follow and listen to our full podcast episode if you guys are interested. That one is very thorough. It's literally like an hour of just answering your guys' questions. So I'll link that down in the description below and make sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Like this video if you're enjoying the Ask the Expert series and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, fellas.